Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today, we have a PFC converter. What I want to do is I want to compare the waveforms of the power coming into this card uh, compared to the one I did in the last video for the low frequency switching power supply. You know, the one with the big toroid transformer, the bulk capacitors and rectifier. You know, like most audio amplifiers were designed in the old days. Well, some still are, right? But, you know, switching power suppliers are coming in and they're going to be taken over. Yeah, you'll still see some of those guys around, just like you still see Class A amplifiers, right? But you might see Class A amplifiers with these guys. Yeah, I think I'm going to do one. Anyway, what we're going to look on this one, the, the last video I had a Torrid, a 160 VA uh, Torrid, I think it was. Not really gigantic or anything like that um, and I think we we're doing looking at about 160 or what was it about 165 watts something like that that we're supplying to the load well in this case we're going to do about the same watts so we can look about the same power coming in okay now the last one we had a VA difference right is about 73 percent something like that so we have to deliver a lot more power to get the same power out so we're going to look at this one, and we're going to look at the waveforms on the scope here, on the MIG-SIG scope with some uh, the MIG-SIG differential probe. I got the probes right here. I'm going to connect them right under here so we can look at the input voltage, and we're going to look at the input current with this mix uh, current probe. All right, let's look at those waveforms so you can compare uh, what a PFC does versus the old style power supply, okay? Now this is just the first stage, then we have to go into a stage where we get isolation and voltage regulation, some more voltage regulation. So this one provides around 390 volts regulated voltage. So it doesn't really care what's going on then, but as a matter of fact, it'll work on 110, 120, 220, 240 volts. I mean, you know, it's a power factor correction circuit meant for universal input. All right, so that's pretty cool. So those power cord guys that think it makes a different audio, well, I think I was trying to, I'm going to show more videos about that, but in the last video you might see how much the transformer and the capacitors make a huge difference and how little the power cord could make, if any. Something like this where you get a regulated voltage out, um, the power cord and all that input circuitry is going to make even less of a difference. And then we're going to go to another stage where we're going to get more regulation and isolation too, galvanic isolation, like we did in you know with in the last video. In the last video, power supply is simpler because it's just one big transformer, a bunch of big caps, and some big rectifiers, and we don't get a lot of efficiency. We get kind of poor power factor. And uh, in this case, we get all the efficiency, the power factor, all that stuff, and a regulated output. But then we also have to go through a second stage. So that's, you know, a little more complexity for better quality power. Okay? So that's what we're going to look at. All right? Let's come over here and look at some waveforms. Let me know what you think in the comments below. All right, guys? All right, let's come over. Oh, and by the way, subscribe, please. Uh, I, I answer subscribers first and uh, patrons first if I can, and then subscribers. And then if I still have time, which I usually do, I start working my way through other ones. But it used to be that I could keep up with all the comments. I, I really can't anymore. I still read them. And I just, yeah, it's just hard, especially a lot of comments have questions. Some of them require little research. So subscribe and you know, you'll get your questions answered. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, uh, and sometimes I answer, you know, I get to them, but it's a couple weeks or even a month later. But yeah, so if you're subscribed, you'll get them answered a lot quicker. All right, guys, let's come over and look at waveforms. All right, guys, this is the UCC 28070 eval board down here, the EVM, okay? I, I believe Texas Instruments sells those for like 100 bucks. I'm using this pan instead of my hand, so my camera hopefully doesn't focus on it. Uh, but anyway, it has uh, a PFC converter. The input power comes right in here. I'm going to look at it with this current probe, okay? Here, I'll just show you the input power coming in. It has a fuse and an MOV and an uh, inrush current protection, which there's not a lot of inrush because the caps are pretty small. So there's a small cap here, small poly cap here that's 
you know, just a little bit of EMI protection. You got your bridge rectifier on a heat sinks on the other side of the board. I did another video on this card, so you can see that. But here's a one mic ferret cap that provides the switching current for these two switching fits. So there's two converters on this. They work together in parallel so that you get less switching uh, noise and stuff like that. You got two converters, you're, you're dividing the heat up, all that stuff between two, plus just the, the way they work, uh, which we'll, we're going to talk more about this uh, later if you guys want to see. I'm going to show you some waveforms in that so you, so you can actually see the waveforms and how this thing works, okay? And we can run through the math and the calculations because we'll use this in the JAT audio amplifier, I believe, okay? Because I think it's a great one. These guys right here are really nice. I, I believe these are for the, the current sense on each one. You see the heavy wire going through the middle and all the little wires around the outside, okay? And they're the boost inductors and your big bulk capacitors to get charged up. And there's a small poly cap right here at the output too. So now this guy right here, the control chip and everything's on this card, okay? The voltage here, this is auxiliary voltage coming in. It's, I'm gonna put 14 volts in from a power supply I'll show you just in a moment. But the voltage here is gonna come in to supply voltage to this old card, okay? Here, let me show you that. I wanna turn off the voltage of the card first. There's the control chip right there, guys. A nice close up of it, okay? Let me switch, flip it over and show you the other side. And there's the other side. So pretty small. And this thing just plugs in with that board edge connector right there. So we just plug it in down here. All right, and that's it. So pretty simple design. Uh, these PFC converters are very robust and yeah, they work great, okay? Here, let's zoom out and show you the rest set up. All right, guys, so I've got this Voltcraft, the VC870, awesome meter because it does uh, power factor. It does watts here. So we're gonna see VA and watts. And then it's easy to calculate power factor. It also shows you, if I flip through the screens, you get hertz and cosine. So uh, you can actually get that kind of stuff, the power factor and stuff, by switching through these screens. But I think I'm going to just leave it on this window so, and we can do the math ourselves because it's almost unity. The watts and the VA are almost the same, okay? And this is the nice little power supply I got from Kai Wheats. It's actually a one want tech or however you pronounce that but it's a nice little power supply i really like it uh yeah really fan of this guy so i i did a video on this um i'm gonna do another more depth video on this but i mean this thing goes 30 volts and 10 amps so pretty awesome and it reads out watts so i like that a lot and it has this option of overcurrent protection or not if you don't, it just folds back the voltage. If you do, as soon as it trips, it just shuts down. So I've got it set at 200 milliamps just for protection, just in case something goes wrong. Okay, and then over here, first of all, we have this load, this big decade box I have, big power load here. And I've got each one of these set at nine. Well, this one at five and set it here at two. Okay, 2K. And then all this is in parallel, right here, this wire here in the corner, if you see the connections. Where also I have the meter, here I'll show you that. The, the connection is down here and I have the multimeter over there, that floor multimeter connected right here so I can watch the volts. And also I was measuring the ohms with it, okay? So when you come up here, you see the, here, let me get in here. here I'll turn this so the, so, let me, all right. So here's the picture of the load, okay? So I've got this set, the way it is, I've got all those resistors. I think they're three watt resistors, a whole bunch of them in parallel, and just kind of tied into this in parallel. And so the overall ohms are, let's see what they are, about 988 ohms, okay? And I'll read the volts as it comes up, but, all right guys, so we're gonna just zoom in on this screen right here. All right, so I've got the high for channel one, which is, so channel one is a differential probe, and we're gonna look at the high and the RMS, and channel two is a current probe, and we'll look at the high and RMS, okay? Let me show you the current probes and the voltage probes. All right, guys, kind of zoomed in on the probes so you can see them. There are these Mixig probes. So we've got a Mixig scope, and we've got the Mixig probes. And this is a magnetic ring here. Holds very secure. It has this 
these buttons here that provide power and all the settings for the current probes and the differential probe. So pretty cool. So it automatically knows which, if you're on times 50 or times 500 because of those pins. And it tells you right here that it's actually set in the right position. This is really awesome. It was kind of showed those in my last video. All right, and also 50 volts per division and one amp per division, okay? So let's go ahead. All right, so I got the auxiliary power supply on, 14 volts, and it's taking about 22 milliamps right now. And here we go, we're taking up the power, whoops. I was going to drop the power down before I turn it on, but I forgot to. So anyway, there's power. Here, I'm gonna freeze the screen, okay? So we can talk without me worrying about things. All right, so I froze the multimeter too, and I'll just turn off the power. All right, guys, so let's just zoom in a little bit closer and look at that screen a little tighter. Tighter. So we have 167 volts uh, high. You know, that's a peak value of the arm, you know, the RMS 122 volts coming in. And 2.34 amps peak with 1.35 amps RMS. I mean, look at that current. The current's the blue one, the voltage is the yellow one. It looks pretty sinusoidal, doesn't it? Now, it almost looks, it looks kind of clunky sinusoidal, but it's trying to be sinusoidal. So instead of having big old pulse currents with the flat in between, like we did in the low frequency switcher, this is more sinusoidal. It's kind of like a crummy looking class B amplifier. You know, with the little crossover distortion, plus a little distortion in other places, but, and we little, little spikes, not bad. We're gonna filter that in the next stage show problem. So this is a lot cleaner looking waveform coming into the power supply before we go into the second stage where we have the isolation transformer. Yeah, it's looking pretty good, I think. Okay, here's a FLIR multimeter. I gotta turn on the power accidentally hit the bold button, hold button. So here, let me turn it on. Okay, there's our 388. Now I can come over here and hold, okay? I'll turn off power. And what's neat about the FLIR is that this is reading constantly and it holds the voltage that you wanted to hold up here. So that's pretty neat. Now if I would have held this down for like a second or two, it would have froze the main image, you know, the main screen. But instead, you, you so you have two options for hold. I think that's pretty neat. But anyway, so we have 388 on the output. Okay, now let's look at the other multimeter. All right, guys, and this is the Volcraft. Look, 160 watts, 0.8 out, okay, 163 VA. So we only have like less than three watts or VA that we're not using. You know, it's actually about, what, 2.4 uh, VA that we're not using. So pretty darn good. All right, guys, what do you think? Now, just in comparison to the last video, the waveforms for low frequency switcher, which is the big toroid, 160 VA toroid, coming into this capacitor bank. About 80 millifarads of capacitance, two banks of 40 millifarads, and two bridge rectifiers. So pretty nice, old fashioned power supply. But it took about 209 VA, you know, to come in because we had a power factor. Because of the pulsating current from this low frequency switcher, uh, you know, it was pulsating about twice as high as the RMS current. And a little bit more than twice as high. So the RMS current is about 1.7, which is about 25% higher than this because of that power factor. Uh, with this one, we get about 163 watts in, you know, maybe a couple extra watts for power factor loss, and that's it. With this one, it was 209 to get about that same, pretty close same power, 163 uh, watts. So, you know, that's almost 80, you know, it's close to 80 watts or VA that you can't use. You have to supply it, but you're not using it, right? So the current has, the wire and everything has to carry that current through the power cord, but you're only utilizing, you know, 76% roughly. A percentage of that okay so the peak currents were about 3.5 a little over 3.5 amps so it's a little bit more than twice the RMS current so you get really high pulsating currents okay that was this design <clears throat> 
So with this one, the RMS current is uh, what 1.37 amps, right around there. Uh, I've turned it on a few times off. It it changes each time that I change the variac a little bit. My variac right here, but so the power's coming to the variac, and I get about 1.37. Well, the peak current is about 2.34. So yeah, it's it's only about an amp extra. Uh, it's it's nowhere near the double current of the peak pulses we saw from the other one. So normally, uh, you know, the peak current would be about 1.414, right? Square root of two above your RMS current. And in this case, is 1.7. So it's not that much higher than, um, you know, than with RMS. It's kind of like looking at a class B amplifier because it's almost sinusoidal, the current coming in but then it does have that little bit of crossover distortion as it crosses over and then it comes down again. Because, you know, as this PFC works, it's switching, putting pulses, but as it gets close to zero, it can't quite do that. So it's it's kind of like a class B amplifier, the waveform. That's kind of what it looks like, right? Yeah, another thing you might notice, there's a little spikes of current. Now remember, this power supply at this point is just providing a boost stage. And it has to boost, uh, or put a gain on the voltage coming in because it's this will work for universal input where that transformer has to be wired for 120 or 240 this one will work with either one just as fine no problem it's a universal input right so we boost it to 390 volts because that's above the peak of say 240 volts now 240 you know, with the tolerance of the voltage line can go up to say 254 generally. So uh, that peak voltage there, you wanna make sure that you boost above that so that you're always boosting. So the power supply, if it wasn't always boosting, then sometimes it would just stop and go, whoa, the voltage is high enough. But since even during the, say a 240 volt input with a high tolerance where maybe the voltage goes up to say 250, 254, it's still boosting a little bit to get the voltage up to 390. And that way it's always boosting. So it works anywhere from, you know, below 120, you know, the tolerance range in one, for, for here in the States, all the way up to uh, anywhere pretty much in the world, right? So it's a universal input they call it. So one of the benefits of the PFC. So now the thing is, is we're gonna have another stage. So this is very efficient, by the way. I actually didn't calculate the efficiency in this video, but I, I believe it was around 95%. I did a previous video on this eval card. I'll put the link down below on this one too, but I believe it's right around 95%. So from this stage, we're going to go into another stage where we will have a transformer where we'll isolate, galvanically isolate the primary power to the secondary power to the, say an audio amplifier, okay? And so I was doing a collaboration with JAT, John Audio Tech. And so uh, this power supply could be the front end of that. It'd be the PFC front end. And that way we get a nice clean power input. We don't have those big pulsating currents, okay? And instead we get more of a sinusoidal power. Also it's more efficient and the power factor, we're not losing uh, that 25, well close to 25%. And meaning that we don't have to bring in a lot more, you know, VA, a lot more power to get the wattage that we're gonna actually use, right? So anyway, yeah, there you go. So let me know what you guys think of this video. Uh, this is just supposed to be a quick one, just to show you the waveforms, kind of compared to the last video, so you could see what a high frequency switcher looks like compared to the previous video, the low frequency, old style transformer with big bulk capacitors. You know, and also this one's going to be uh, lower cost. That one, those capacitors and that transformer are expensive. This one has little small transformers. It only has two 100 microfarad capacitors where instead of 80 millifarads and a big toroid, plus the big bridge rectifiers, those are shock key diodes in that bridge rectifier, pretty nice. And 
two heat sinks on them. So the heat sinks cost a little money. Now we have heat sinks here too, so that's kind of a you know trade-off. Uh, these are a lot more efficient, so we're going to not burn as much power. So anyway, so we do have the bridge rectifier on this one too. Um, the cup brings power in, but then there's a very small capacitor. I think it's a one mic ferret capacitor. It's just kind of hold smooth off the voltage just a little bit as the transistors are switching on and off it it pulls from that one mic fair cap very small cap compared to the big ones down here but then it provides that 390 volts on those two uh 100 mic fair caps now two 100 mic fair caps that's like 0.2 farads compared to uh let's just say one bank of that would be each bank is 40 millifarads so a fraction right it's like you know <laughs> a lot less capacitance but energy wise voltage is squared so voltage energy is one half cv squared okay so on this one um the energy is about the same pretty close to that one you know so uh i think this one's 17 joules and this one's 15 joules if you calculate that so one half cv squared voltage is 390 squared down here uh the voltage i think out on the output was 29 volts you know squared so a lot smaller right so you need all that those big capacitors to make up the difference and uh also the frequency on this one is switching much faster than the 60 hertz or 50 hertz on your old style low frequency switcher so you have to have those big caps to hold up the uh the energy in between cycles right we're here we don't switching a lot faster and this one is a very interesting one because there's actually two pfcs working uh together and so we're going to talk more about that i did like i said i did a video before on this uh links down below but we're going to do we're going to talk more about this and we're going to look a little deeper into this like the spectrum the noise spectrum and we'll compare the noise spectrum from each one in fact just so you can kind of see what that looks like so hope you liked it two thumbs up my patrons as always really appreciate you guys uh there's a thank you what they call the super thanks button that youtube added super nice and uh and i'm adding that uh membership down below too I think I'm going to have two levels of the membership. Um, the first, both levels, you get a badge when you comment or something. So, and eventually we'll have some custom badges we can put there, okay? But yeah, there's some badges down there. And then also, for the higher level, uh, I am going to do those live videos. So, this year we're going to start doing live videos. I uh, kind of had a hiccup in January, kind of a tough month. A few things happened. So we're, we're going to start those as well. So I wanted to get the membership started before I did that. And it'll be open to patrons as well as the members. Okay? All right. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you next time.